so excited to share part two of the 10 commandments of happiness and friends if you did not get one two and three it's yesterday in the previous episode of full tank we are now in commandment four five and six i did not get this from any book research survey i got this from my experience of 40 years of helping thousands of people in their life are you ready Woo! Commandment number four, don't argue about everything. Do you know of people who like argue, like argue and argue and everything is a fight. Everything is, I'm right, you're wrong. Guess what? These people are either so competitive or so insecure. It's like there's a scoreboard and they feel very bad if they don't win in an argument or they're both. They're both competitive and, and insecure. I want you to know this, that, that you know, I'll, I'll give you one example. I was talking about submission, that the wife should submit to the husband. That's in the Bible. St. Paul said that. Wives, submit to your husbands. Now, I want you to know that I was talking about this with a friend of mine. And then I said, I said to him, as, as he said, can you explain that verse to me? So I explained, 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 you know. And, th and then I said, but you know what? Just want you to know, we practice that. And my wife is very submissive. But you know when I think about my marriage? I guess 99% of all our decisions, I, I follow what she wants. And so we both laughed. And, and he said, that, 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 that's, that's weird, Bo. And, and you're telling me that your wife submits to you, but 99% she gets followed. And he said, I'll tell you why. I love her. I, I, I want her to be happy. You know, there are many times though, she says, Bo, can you make a decision? I feel so good when you make a decision. Bingo, I do it. It's my service for her. But there are times when I know her preferences. And, and so I say, hey, I, 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 I want to I wanna love you. I want to make, every morning when I wake up, I say, how can I make my wife happy? So, so there, when, when, you're, when you're in that posture, listen to me. It's not, it's not so much who's right. But who is, who is loving? Be loving instead of being right. Meaning to say, if you have a choice between being right and being loving, why, why not choose being loving? Because God, God, God's the greatest commandment, uh, second greatest commandment, love your neighbor as you love yourself. God did not say be right in every, that's not a commandment, be right in every argument. No, it's, it's making that decision. I'm going to love, I'm going to care. Here's commandment number five. Are you ready? Here it is. Don't blame others for your situation. If you keep blaming other people for your, you know, for your poverty, for, for your being a failure, for being, you know, man, you will never be happy. I was abused as a child when I was eight and when I was 13, molested, and it created havoc in my life. It destroyed my self-esteem, my self-perception. It destroyed me, believe me. But at a certain point in my teenage life, I just had to make a decision and say, look, if I'm going to blame what's happening to me now with the people that molested me, I will never change. And so what did I do? And this is something I want you to do. If you're going through life right now and you, you want to blame your parents, you want to blame your boss, you want to blame all oh, your friends, you want to blame your, whew, your uncle, your grandfather, your company, your government. If you want to keep on blaming people, you will never be able to move on. You need to own it. You need to say, this is my life. I'm going to make decisions here. From now on, I'm moving up. From now on, I'm moving forward. From now on, I am changing, transforming my future. That's what you want to do. Stop blaming. It will always make you miserable. Start owning it. Take responsibility. Here's number, here's number the third, it's the sixth commandment. So four, five, six. Don't compare yourself with others. If you keep comparing, if, you have, if you're sick with comparisonitis, you will always be miserable, you know. Why, why, why does he have a new car? Why, is, why did he get promoted? I don't. I didn't. Why does he have a beautiful life? I don't get a beautiful life. Why, 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 why is he the leader of the prayer group? I'm not. Hey, you, you, you religious people are, are, are also afflicted by this. And, and so it's, it's what should you do? I'm, I'm telling you, you've got to be able to be happy with what you have. And... Our gospel is John chapter 6 was still there and Jesus refers to the manna that was given in the Old Testament. I love this because the Israelites were in the desert and they were hungry. God gives them manna. And what happened with this? It just fell. It just appeared on the ground when they woke up. So, whoa, what's this? You know, which is the literal translation of manna. What is this? And so they got baskets and they started collecting and they ate it, you know. And, and, but some people, they hoarded. 
And here's what happened. So they ate and then they hoarded for tomorrow. And then when they woke up tomorrow, they, they looked at their basket and it was man, bulok. You know, it was so bad. It was stinking. And it was a lesson. It was a lesson to Israel. It's a lesson to us that we, we're not supposed to hoard. You know, if you keep comparing yourself, you know, why do they have more? I have less. Then what you're going to do is you're going to try to think that the, the man who has the most stuff wins. And so you hoard. But then it will make you miserable. It will stink in your life. It will. What you need to do is learn to say, this is a blessing from God today. I have this, you know. Focus on what you have, not on what others have. Focus on what you have. You're going to be so happy. Every single day of your life, just say thank you. Let's do that. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for, for loving me. Thank you for blessing. Thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for every single blessing that you have given to me. I love you, Jesus, and I will serve you forever and ever. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, but I'm having so much fun with, uh, with this series. And so tomorrow we end with the last four commandments in my Ten Commandments of Happiness. See you tomorrow.